was staying on the suspension of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Better Edu, by the President, and her invitation uh, by the EFCC. Our correspondent, Celestina Aria, is live for us at the EFCC headquarters. Um, Celestina, what more can you tell us at the moment? Well, Precious, for a fact that uh, the suspended minister was invited by the EFCC today for questioning in regards to the alleged misappropriation of 585 million naira. But we don't know how far that has gone or if she's still in the facility of the EFCC. But we know that these issues that surrounds this money probably is a violation of the Nigerian reg financial regulation. If you look at section 713 of that regulation, does the, does, it says that monies meant for the government should not go into private accounts, and money meant for private individuals should not be paid into the government account. So this was the basis of the invite by the EFCC today, and also the suspension by the minister, uh, of the minister by the president. So, and there's also another money of uh, three billionaire aside that the suspended CEO of National Social Investment Program Agency said that the min alleged that the suspended minister had withdrawn from the account. So these are issues that made the EFCC invite her today for questioning, to know how come that monies uh, from MDAs is being transferred to a personal account and to account for what that money was meant for. But she had said that the money was meant for uh, vulnerable groups, grant for vulnerable groups, and for four states. So this money was to be disbursed to the most vulnerable people in this very state. So the EFCC will do its due diligence by asking important questions to get clarification on how this money came about and how it was spent. And have we heard from the EFCC as to um, the, the time, the deadline for her appearance at the um, headquarters? Not at all pressures. The invite was extended to her today immediately after she was suspended. So we are hoping any moment from now or tomorrow, most likely, if she will honor the invitation and appear before the EFCC. We recall today that the EFCC also invited the former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, after which the EFCC had also invited the suspended CEO of the uh, National Social Investment Program. But it leaves, it leaves a question as to what is actually going on in that very uh, ministry. Now, the president has set up a committee supervised by the coordinating minister of, of economy and uh, the minister of finance to look into the affairs of that uh, social investment to be able to, to know what is going on there. Because, but because we recall that the suspended minister today had said that uh, that the uh, she got approval for that money, but the attorney general of the federation had come out to say that no approval was gotten. That she actually raised. Although a request was sent to her office, she raised the illegality to that. Another question that bears in mind is the fact that we understand the financial officer of the ministry ought to be the permanent secretary, the PAMSEC of the ministry. What is he or her involvement in this particular money? Was the person in the know of this particular money that the minister disbursed out for payment? And why was the money made to a personal account, irrespective of the fact that she has said the person uh, is the program's uh, accountant of the uh, vulnerable, the, uh, the grant for vulnerable groups. So all these are questions that will be asked and answers will be, will be provided. Hopefully that the EFCC will make public its findings. Of course, we know that she's still innocent until proven guilty. And the suspension was to allow the EFCC uh, to speak to her and conduct the investigation and also the panel set up by the president to do the investigation properly. And so, Lassina, can you confirm, confirm for us, I know you've spoken to this, but just, you know, for confirmation, um, can you confirm for us if Better Redu and her predecessor, um, Sadi Amaro Farouk, are at the EFCC headquarters at this time? Our pressures, I can only confirm that earlier today, uh, Sadia Umaru came to the EFCC. She responded to the invitation that was under, well, extended to her. But that of Better Edu, I cannot confirm that. But we know the invitation was extended to her today. As she honored the invitation, that information we don't have yet. All right. Thank you so much, Alessina, for that update. Our correspondent, Alessina, real life for us at the EFCC, EFCC headquarters in Abuja.
Well, back to the suspension and investigation of the former minister of um, human, so rather the yeah, both the former and the current ministers of um, the minister, uh, minister of humanitarian affairs. Let's now bring in the um, chairman, partners for electoral reform and convener, say no uh, campaign Nigeria, Zewan Wangu. Uh, good to have you join us. Oops. Mr. Wangu, you have to unmute yourself. Yes. yes, can you hear me now? Absolutely, I can hear you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, let me, let me just ask, because this, this administration is barely um, eight months or less than eight months, and we've seen the first minister being suspended. What does that say to you? Because this, is, this particular minister was very active and very visible, or is very active and very visible. Well, I, I think first it's... Uh, it perhaps puts the president in very good light that he's proactive, uh, that he doesn't have to stay through the whole of the investigation and all of those things that we saw in the past administration, where uh, people who had uh, reputational challenges were allowed to stay in government almost all through um, the eight years of the past administration. I think that this is a good signal uh, especially when you put it side by side, the fact that the, the minister uh, in question prides herself as being very close and indeed can even claim to be those in the kitchen cabinet um, of the president if there is anything like that. So the signal is good. Uh, it's a pointer to the fact that perhaps um, this government will not tolerate uh, the kind of malfeasance that we have seen, uh, folks who uh, who have who have been given public trust abuse that trust uh, very flagrantly and without consequences. So this, for me, is a good signal for consequence management. If you if you if you uh, fall short of uh, the law, then it's, it's important that those who have responsibility to wield the big stick do that quickly, and that is. For me, it's something that excites. All right, so let's talk about the, the potency of the word suspension because some people are on the, in the school of thought that sometimes when people are suspended, you know, there, there is no prosecution after, there is no recovery made. Others say even when they are found not guilty, they, they never return to, to office. So what's the potency of the suspension? Well, I, I think we, we need to put the pressure that if she's found guilty, that she should be uh, sanctioned and through uh, due process of law. Uh, it's also important not to dismiss efforts that are meant to restore confidence. Um, like I said, you saw a situation in which it, it, sometimes it will take a protest to get that minister out, uh, to even be suspended. So if you have uh, a government, a, a government that is barely six months trying to send this kind of signal. I think when there is need for us to clap, we should clap. As to the the other challenges of whether uh, they will be prosecuted, that also has to do with uh, how how potent indeed the citizen oversight around anti-corruption is. Mm -hmm. If we get laid back, because come to think of it. People are exploiting the misfortune of majority of our citizens who are vulnerable, mm. you know, the, to, 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 to line their private pockets. And Transparency International tells you that uh, corruption is abuse of public office for, for mm. personal gain. And in the light of the one that you are seeing, once you channel government funds into private resources, you are leaving discretion. Mm. Because and but once you find I, I have, um, Mr. Wangu, just, just because of time, I wanted to ask you, because the coordinating minister, Wali Edu, has not been put in charge of the panel um, to investigate this particular allegation. Um, what's the task before him? Sorry, I didn't get that. Um, the coordinating minister of the economy, that's Wali Edu, has not been put um, in charge of the panel to, to investigate this particular allegation and report back to the president. What's the task before him, seeing that he's also a minister, the coordinating minister of the economy as well? The task before him is to un uncover and, and make public uh, if there is any malfeasance. And if there is not, but there, already there is, there is clear, once you understand the definition of uh, 
corruption from the perspective of abuse of public trust for personal gain. Why will you, once you take out public money and put it in private hands, what you are trying to avoid is the processes, the procedures that are laid down already for by the financial regulations that guides the expenditure in government. So wanting to circumvent that itself is a, is a, is 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 um is is something that would needs to worry you know the, the government. So the question of whether or not improving beauty, the fact that this 536 billion have found its way into a private pocket is enough to indict that minister. And we only do just have the responsibility of bringing that to the fore and ensuring that she's sanctioned. And in just 30 seconds, one of the tasks before him is to win, um, win back lost conf public confidence. How um, possible is that? Well, I've just said that it is signal that, that has already been put out is, is good enough for public confidence mm. that within right. uh, 48 hours of this happening, the president has withered the big stick of suspending her is, 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 a, is, is a good signal. So the, that panel has responsibility to ensure that there is no cover up and that even on a prime facie basis, that the fact that these monies have found its way into pri private, private uh, uh, account is enough indictment for that minister. And that, I think that is the reason she suspended, because um, the rest is to now find out the, ho the whole issue around the other three billion you were talking about and why indeed that these monies we are put into private accounts. All right, we'll see how all of this plays out. Um, a lot of development are around just one ministry. Thank you so much for talking to us. Chairman, Partners for Electoral Reform and Convener, Say No Campaign Nigeria, uh, Zewan Wangu. Thank you so much for talking to us. I appreciate you. Happy New Year.